Hi folks, welcome back to our second instalment of our little synthesizer from scratch thingy that we're doing. So last time what we did is we looked at how to build a simple oscillator and um, we had a little op amp and it was inverting if you remember, Schmidt trigger and it did this. Right, we had a variable resistor feeding back here, we had a capacitor, go back and watch my last video if you don't remember all this because I'm not going to go over that again. So what we're going to do this time is we're going to build a thing called a sequencer and what our sequencer is going to do, what a sequencer does in general is it plays a sequence of things, voltages usually, but in our case we're going to electronically swap out these resistors. So we're going to have a chip that is essentially going to, we're going to have a load of resistances all in parallel all connected together but we're going to have a chip here kind of in the way and what the chip is going to do is it's going to just play these one at a time so it will start by connecting these two together and then it will disconnect those two and connect these two together and then so on and so forth we're going to have eight we're going to have eight resistances so we can so if we set all these eight resistances to different values, when the sequencer switches through them, it will sound like the oscillator is go going from one note to another note to another note to another note to another note. Um, so this is kind of the simplest sequencer that you can really do. Um, but it's a little bit more involved than last time. We've got a couple of chips, there's a, there's a couple of bits that I don't want to go into too much detail about yet because I just want to get something down that sounds cool and works. So if you get a little bit lost in this video, don't worry about it, just follow along the schematic. I'll try and make the schematic really clear where to um, connect things up to and we'll go onto the breadboard and you'll see me build one. Um, but don't worry too much because we're going to come back to this when we've got a little bit more understanding and build something that's a bit more um, involved. So I'm going to draw it up on the board and we'll go through it. Right, so this is the schematic, and now I know this looks a lot more complicated compared to what we did before. But we're going to go through it bit by bit, and we're going to see that it's just what we were doing before, but just with this extra chip changing these resistors, okay? So the first thing that we've got, the, the thing that we've recognised that we've already seen before, is we've got this. So this is the same as what we did in the last video. This is the oscillator, so I'm going to label that oscillator, okay? So, this is an audio rate. This is an audio rate oscillator, um, and when I say audio rate, what I mean by that is that we've selected the values, so we can vary these. What we can't vary is this capacitor. So you set this capacitor value, pick something like a 0.1 microfarad, and that's going to give you. So remember that it's the speed that this charges and discharges that sets the frequency of the oscillator. So I won't go into the maths, it's not important, but pick a 0.1 microfarad capacitor and have these all as 100k resistors, variable resistors, potentiometers, um, and you'll get frequencies out that oscillate in the human range of hearing, right? Which is 20 to 20,000 hertz, okay? So, the reason I'm telling you this is because we've got another one up here, but we're going to set this one, we're going to pick a much bigger value for this. I'm going to pick like, I can't remember off the top of my head, I think I picked like a one microfarad. So this is ten times bigger than this. So with the same resistance, so I'm going to, let's pick a hundred kilo ohms up here as well, with the same resistance, right, so the same current, but a ten times bigger capacitor, is going to charge 10 times slower. So if this is giving us oscillations in the order of 20 to 20 kilohertz, this will give us oscillations in the range of 2 to 2000 hertz, very roughly. So you can see that these low frequencies, you're not going to hear these as a tone, um, you know, two times a second, about that. Um, and so what these pulses are going to do, so let's just say it's at one hertz, just to keep it nice and simple. So what that means is that you get one up 
and down so that this bit here, each one of these lasts for one second at one hertz. So every second, the output of this slow oscillator is going into this next section. You can see here I've labeled this is pin 10 on this other, pit, this other chip, which is the clock input. So we're actually using this very slow oscillator. This is exactly the same setup, but just much slower charging rates um, as a clock input because it's a nice square wave that um, clock inputs like. Uh, it's got a clearly defined difference between high and low. You'll often see clock in, well, you always see clock inputs, in fact, as a square wave. So this chip now, I will tell you what it is. So I hope you understand that. It's just the same as this, but slower. And we're using it to control this, which is a CD4040. And what this thing does is it's a binary counter. So it's got these three, three outputs, A, B, and C, and they just count in binary, okay? So these three outputs are gonna count in binary. I won't go into it because it's not important, but what you need to know is that the value of these three will count from naught to seven in binary, and those inputs go into here, and they tell the chip which of these eight inputs, so you know, naught, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, to pick, okay? So this is the CD4051. And what this is, is called a multiplexer, an eight to one multiplexer. So you've got eight inputs and you've got one output. And as I said before, it's going to connect this one. Well, it'll do it the other way around, actually. We're going from top to bottom. It'll connect this one, and then it'll connect this one, and then it'll connect this one, and then it'll connect this one, and so on. And then when it gets to the end, it'll go back to the start. Because we've set this pin, so you can see I've got A, B, C here. Um, and so, so you can see I've got A, B, C here. Um, so when it gets to the D number, so I don't want to go into it because it's not relevant to this, but this is counting up in binary, and when it goes over the number we want it to count to, you can see that the D output is just connected straight up to the reset pin. So it resets the timer back to zero, and then the next clock pulse um, increments the counter to one. So this doesn't affect the timing of the circuit at all. This just means it will count from naught to seven because this thing has 12 outputs. So it can count from naught to two to the power of 12 minus one. Um, again, I don't want to get into that too much. Just connect these three outputs of this counter to these three inputs, pins nine, 10, 11 on the 4051, and that will switch between these eight um, potentiometers. And as you can see, this is exactly the same. I'll re redraw it here. Um, why do I have two rubbers? Um, I'll redraw it here, what we had last time. So you can see how we had feedback resistor and it's coming down and charging and discharging this capacitor. We know this, we're good at this now. Um, so you can see here how, while this looks very complicated, all it's doing is this, but we've got this thing here that's swapping that's selecting, rather, I should say, um, between these eight resistors. This is just a counter that tells this which one to pick so that we don't have to do it manually. You know, we could connect this up to three switches, but then we'd have to go, let's not go there. Um, and this is just a clock that sets the, the rate at which these get selected through. So this is essentially our tempo. If we think of these as eighth notes, Right, two pulses on this is a beat, so it's one, two, 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 three, two, four, two, right? And that's about it. So I hope that this is clear. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go over to the breadboard and I'm gonna build this up for you um, and show you how it all connects together. I'll go over, again, I'll go over each section separately and show you how they work um, and put it all together. And then um, we'll move on to the next thing. So let's go over to the breadboard. So here's this circuit. I'm gonna go over it section by section like we did on the whiteboard. So, and I'll just show you kind of how everything goes together. So first we have, this is a 4106, exactly the same as what we had before. Only you see now we've got this massive 
capacitor in there. And yeah, that is one microfarad capacitor I've got in there. And I've got a 0.1 microfarad capacitor just here. So this is the resistor to control the slow clock like we spoke about. So if I show you that on scope. Okay, so in the blue is the audio speed and the yellow, it's kind of hard to get them both on at the same time, is the clock. And if I show you how they sound different, this is the clock. So you can hear that's just clicking a couple of times a second. So it clicks once when it goes on and it clicks again audibly when it goes off because that's just the speaker doing this. Because obviously you have to remember the speakers that's what the signal you're seeing is, is the voltage on the speaker. And um, this is the audio rate one. So you can see it's a lot, the frequencies are massively different. And I just kind of wanted to show you that that's, that's one example of what we do with electronics. Just because something's an oscillator doesn't mean it has to be an audio signal. Doesn't mean it has to be anything. Um, you can use any type of circuit to do all sorts of weird and wonderful things. And that's kind of what we're all about. On here just exploring especially when you're doing like making synths you can make you can use all sorts of random circuits that you wouldn't expect to go in a synth and they do all this crazy interesting stuff so um, please experiment on your own with like all sorts of different chips and designs you can find online okay let's get back to it so we've had a look at these on the scope we listen to what they sound like so what do we do next so we take the clock now and we're going to plug the clock in down here. So this is our CD4040 that I showed you. This is the binary counter. These three bits are going to show us the what number it's on in binary. If you don't know binary, then don't worry about it. But you'll just see that it's obviously counting. And you have to just take my word for it. That it's counting from 0 to 7. So 6, 7, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 0. So I've actually got the reset pin held low because I realised that you actually don't need the fourth bit resetting it because the cycle just repeats because that's just how binary works. So um, that's a bit easier, I think, than resetting. Um, we'll come back later on to um, doing some more complicated stuff with digital circuits, but I think for now I don't want to get too over the top. So this 3-bit binary number is going to go into the A, B and C inputs of the... 4051 here, which you can see is pins 9, 10, and 11. Yeah, so we've got input A is this top one, so that's coming from over here. Input B, where's my pen? Input B is here, so that's the middle bit, which is this one here. This is ground. Um, and input C is down here. So if you insert them in the wrong order, it will just play the sequence backwards <laughs> or in a weird order, so don't, don't worry too much about it. I've only got two. Um, potentiometers on here instead of all eight again just to save um, a bit of complexity but let me unplug these for now and let's just go over how we're going to connect this up so if this is my first one and this is my second one um, if you go online and just google cd4051 pin out call it um, you'll come up with a diagram that will show you what each pin is and so um, you want to ground VSS and VEE. This will be uh, VCC, and that goes to the power. Um, the same with this. All these CD um, chips, the top right pin goes to power, and the bottom left pin goes to ground. This one, the 4051, is a weird one because it's got this VEE. You don't worry about what that is for now, but just ground it and ground this in. <laughs> it's inhibit. Um, it's kind of like reset. It will stop it from doing whatever it wants to do um, so just ground that as well and so we're just ignoring those things so we've got these are the inputs a b and c on the bottom left here and so now what you want to do is i think pin three yeah is the out slash in um, why it's out slash in and not just out or in is that it's bi-directional so it doesn't care which is the output and which is the input it just connects two inputs and goes you sort it out i don't care which one to use the input and which one to use the output so it's pin three here so what we're going to do, we're going to take a cable 
and we're going to connect pin 3 to the input of our audio rate oscillator right which is this pin pin 3 of our 40106 okay so now we want to find number 1 in out 1 which is in out 0 sorry which is pin 13 so it's the one across the way from here and one down actually so remember it's um, this little there's a little bubble in the chip on the top it might be quite hard to see on camera but to the left of that is pin 1 and then you count counterclockwise right around so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 down here and then go around here that's 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 so pin 13 is this pin here so I hope I'm not going to get my head in the way for all of those uh, so there's pin 14 so now when this is on the zeroth position I'm going to just put the reset high so it stays on the zeroth position so now this is just connecting those two points so now if you kind of imagine the, cir the current path is going, um, well, let me connect this up first, actually. And then the other lug of the uh, potentiometer, you want to connect back over the output of the 4106. So now you can see when these are connected, um, the current is going out the output through this resistor, now through this chip to the common, or our out slash in, whatever it's called on whatever data sheet you find and then back to the input where it charges up this capacitor and so you can hear that I can now control this with this one okay and now if I'll set up two this lug that's connected to the output you just want to connect all of these lugs together right so you're connecting this one to this one, I'll just put the third one in quickly, just, just, just uh, confusion. Right across to here, so those two would be connected. Right, and then the middle lugs, which are connected, you want to connect to the appropriate input output on the 4051. So, next one I want is in out one, which is pin. 14. And then the third one will be connected to pin out in out 2, which is pin 12. And then if I set this counting by just setting the reset low so it's not resetting anymore, then you'll hear that when this is on 2, oh, this one doesn't work. Oh, I've connected that into the wrong input. Whoops. Yeah, in out two has been fifteen. So not one two. And then by setting the rate of the slower oscillator, you set the rate that the sequence goes around at. So if I speed it up, or I can set it right down. Okay, and that's all there is to it, really. You just connect up as many of these as you want, well up to eight, because you can only have eight, but you could add a second chip if you're clever enough to figure out how to um, extend this ripple counter and just add more outputs. In future videos uh, we'll extend this sequencer to be a little bit better, um, add swing, add 3-4, um, add multiple tracks, you know, you want to be able to control more than just one kind of bass synthesizer, which is essentially what this is. Um, and in the next video, I'll show you how we can use the sequencer to control other things outside of um, just controlling the pitch of this one oscillator. So I'll cut now, I'll, I'll finish this off and I'll just show you a little thing of the whole thing working nicely with some nice like, pretty lights to show you and stuff. Um, it'll look a little bit more complicated, but don't worry about it. It's essentially just this with some extra like, bits, just so you can see what's going on a bit better. Um, and come back next time, and we'll carry on doing this. So I'll see you then.